This is Oxford's Town Hall, built in the 19th century as a response to Oxford University's dominance over the city. This was an announcement that the town was in control. Designed by architect Henry Hare, this building kicked off an illustrious career in civic building design. Henry Hare's signature is to leave an image of a hare within the building, and we still haven't found the one in the town hall yet. The town hall is the third major building on this site. It was opened in 1897 by the Prince of Wales, Edward VII. Many students took exception to the opening of the town hall, and one was even arrested. The main hall is particularly impressive, colourful and decorated with ornate plasterwork. The magnificent centrepiece, the Henry Willis and Son organ, is a rare example. They managed to forget the organ when building the town hall and had to remove the roof to put it in at great cost. This space has seen it all. David Bowie played here in 1972 on the Ziggy Stardust tour. In 1997, Nelson Mandela visited and was given the freedom of the city. This space was even a military hospital during World War I, a place for soldiers with malaria to recover. An austere room, the courtroom was used both by the magistrates court and for the quarter sessions. The magistrates court continued until 1969 and the quarter sessions continued until 1972. Used as a film location for A Fish Called Wanda, it is used today for mock trials and even weddings. The quarter sessions would deal with more serious offences. The judge would sit here with the jury alongside. The defendant would sit in the dock and then return to their cell via the direct route. The council chamber is a purpose-built space for council meetings, still used today. At one end, we have three seats, one for the Lord Mayor, the Deputy Lord Mayor, and alongside them, the Chief Executive for the City Council. Next to them is this brace. It holds the city's mace, a symbol of power. At the opposite end of the chamber sits the Sheriff, and behind them, the public gallery. All of the locally elected councillors fill the remaining seats. Oxford has a, a primarily Labour council, followed by Lib Dems and then the Green Party. The ceiling of the chamber is decorated with the signs of the zodiac, perhaps to remind councillors when they're here that their roles continue all year long. Jumping back several hundred years, we're now entering the medieval cellar in the basement of the town hall. These cellars can be found under many buildings in Oxford. This doorway was bricked up in the 1930s and it possibly led to tunnels that run under St Aldate's. These tunnels were often used as security measures for Oxford's Jewish medieval inhabitants. They were often money lenders and these tunnels would provide safe passage to other similar cellars. The cellar is now a store for the city's plate. One of the most interesting objects sometimes stored here is Oxford's civic mace. It is the largest mace of its kind in the country. Made in 1660, it weighs about seven kilograms. During the beating of the bounds, an Oxford tradition to mark out the boundary of the city, an over-enthusiastic officer jumped out of a punt, knocking the mace into the River Cherwell. The mace was recovered, however the globe sitting on the top is a replacement. The original is still possibly sitting at the bottom of the chairwell. The town hall still has lots of secrets to offer and the museum runs tours every month. There are hundreds of events in the town hall and you can hire the rooms. We hope to see you soon.